Good evening and welcome back to Let's Play Game of Thrones. When we left off last time, Garrod was sent up to the wall because even though he was just in killing his father and sister's murderers, uh, we're afraid that the they were a White Hill and um, Bolton men, and we're concerned that those two houses are going to come after us and demand Garrett's death. So going to the wall is a way to keep him alive, but it's also kind of bull because they invaded our land and killed our people. So there was no retribution that should come down on Garrett. But regardless, then we switched over to Ethan, the young, the new Lord Forester, who seems quite, I'm not sure just how old he is. He's quite young, um, but we've got to be been called into a meeting with Lord Whitehill or someone from his house, and I have a feeling he's going to try and push us around. I think, it, I see this as sort of like, it, to him, it's a test of what can he get away with now that there's a new and experienced young kid in charge of House Forester. And we have to set a precedent here, because if we just give in to whatever demands this guy has, then it's it's like starting off on the wrong foot. It's going to take us years to reestablish any kind of respect and authority in our dealings with these other houses. We're going to have to be kind of firm and aggressive right from the start and let them know that we're not messing around. Otherwise, they're going to just try to, to run all over us just because we're young. So let's see how this meeting goes. Oh, there's Ethan. They showed up unannounced. Lord Whitehill is in a lather. I assume you explained to Lord Ethan why they're here? A business with Garrett. I told him. Lord Whitehill knows Garrett is a squire to this house. Or was, I suppose. Is. Was. It makes no difference. The Whitehills were clearly in the wrong. Exactly. So don't give him any satisfaction. Out there, you were decisive and firm. Now do it again with these bastards. He's right. Let's not do something rash. Things are bad enough as it is. I can handle Lord Whitehill. Well said, my lord. Aha! Now is not the time to anger Lord Whitehill any more than he already is. He's got five times mm. as many men, and the backing of House Bolton. Well, that's All a little problematic, to stand but... Up for ourselves. Only cowards and dead men, Lord Whitehill. And he just busts in? Alright, Whitehill. Time to set some things straight. Well... Lord Ethan, is it? Yep. My condolences for your father and brother. The late Lord Forrester was no friend to me or my house. And you can but shake hands. My only regret is I wasn't there to drive the <gasps> dagger into his heart myself. Oh, really? I've been waiting for this day all my life. How dare you? I dare, and I'll do as I damn well please. No, you won't. And no bread and salt! What kind of fucking house receives a lord with no fucking bread and salt? You bloody amateur. No courtesies. I should have expected as much. Calm yourself, old man. Yeah. You little fuck! Oh, he can remember that all he wants. Lord, That's how I talk to you. You have shit on us for generations. Well, now the Starks are no longer around to have your back, are they? We're the power in the north now. I'm not taking Bruce this crap Bolton from you. Is the warden of the north. Aye. And we've been his bannermen for five fucking centuries. You cunt. This guy. Lord Ethan, you're losing control of this. That's enough, Lord Whitehill. I'm not finished. Yes, you are. Maybe if you hadn't been so fucking greedy with the ironwood, things would have been different between us. You squandered your share. Our share was taken from us. We had no fucking choice but to harvest what was left. What is it you want, Lord Whitehill? Ah, this fella. Go ahead, tell me some lies. Your man, the squire. We were minding our own business. No, you weren't. Keeping the king's peace, as his lordship here said, when your man attacked us for no reason. Bull. Hear that? Attack for no reason. No reason? You murdered his family. Then you admit it was your man who killed my men. And a pig farmer at that. How do you answer for your squire, Lord Ethan? He was in the right. He acted in your name. We lost people too, Lord Whitehill. Your men murdered his entire family. You lost pig farmers, not soldiers. Hey. Soldiers worth a hundred of their type. Uh, no. That's Where's not how it works. Coward who killed my men? You don't get him. No, he's here. 
What have you done with him? I took care of it. He received his punishment and it's done. He's gone. What? Gone? That was my justice no, to deliver, wasn't. boy, and you denied me of it. I'm not leaving until I have my justice. Now bring me the coward who did it, or you'll answer to Roos Bolton. That's enough of this guy. Come on. Game, give what me some kind of, kind of choice. What fucking house is this? A house of honorable men. Ethan's young, so we can't hold this against him. I didn't like any of my conversation options. We really needed to be much, much sterner with this guy and put him in his place. Whether he likes us or not, he's dealing with the Lord. He's going to come in here and tell, talk to us about a lack of respect. Look at him. So hopefully now Lady Forrester is going to assert a little authority and put him in place. But even that's not really ideal because Ethan really needs to stand on his own. So we'll see. I guess it, it makes sense because he's young and inexperienced that... The game's not necessarily going to give me the options to say the things I want to say to this guy. But I feel like we're just being way too kind of meek and soft here. Like, the way he's blustering around, we should throw him out until he's ready Lady to be calm. Forrester. You bellow like a wounded boar, Lord Whitehill. Yeah. Have you forgotten your manners? Why didn't, why didn't you say that, Ethan? Call him out. I mean no disrespect to you, my lady, considering your losses and all. You certainly do mean disrespect. This, this is not over. It's over when my son says it is. This is over, Lord Whitehill. Ethan is Lord of Ironrath now. By rights, his word is law here. If that displeases you, then I trust you can find the door. Exactly. We should have kicked this guy out as soon as he started blustering and that throwing insults around. Maybe Lord of this house. But Lord Bolton will have the final say. I'll send him a raven letting him know a forester man killed one of his own. That the new Lord Forrester lied to my face and denied me my justice. Then we'll see whose word is law. Get off my land. You're a craven, Lord Whitehill. Maybe it wasn't the smartest to send an insult after him, but... Hmm. Defiance or diplomacy? I was yeah, wrong probably. about your son, my lady. He stood up to him like a true lord. You were brave, my son. But you'll need to be braver still when Ramsay Snow arrives to see you bend the knee. Prepare a raven. We need to send word to Mira in King's Landing at once. Yeah, that's not going to be the end of it. We're going to have a lot more trouble with those White Hills. Your sister can help us. Oh, are we going to be Mira now? Although just a handmaiden, she has Marjorie Tyrell's favor. There she is. And Lady Marjorie's betrothal to the king may be enough to keep the Boltons at bay. If it's presented to her as it should be. All right, Mira, let's have a look-see. Let's take a look. It was very kind of Lady Marjorie to give this to me. It once belonged to Lady Elena. Ethan made this for me. Poor girl, missing her family. Gimpish coin. Asher sent me this coin to remember him. What a strange place, Essos. I really like that they have the exiled son over in Essos. It's because when you read about it in a book, you hear occasionally about people who've been exiled, and you don't think too much of it. But this is a, a different perspective because now we're we're seeing it from all the siblings' point of views, and it makes you think about how it must really feel for a family to be divided up like that. You know, like all the kids in the forest when they were playing, saying how, yeah, I really miss Asher, and I miss Mira, and, you know, the way they're all spread out, it's hard on them. And especially with with Asher, it's got to be really rough, because there, there may be some hope that perhaps after everything settled down, depending on who ends up ruling Westeros, maybe he'll be able to come back, but, you know, maybe not. He might just be gone forever, and you never get to see him again unless you decide to cross the sea and head over to Essos yourself. Serious thing, banishment. Let's see what we got here. Father, 
Much excitement here in King's Landing for the coming wedding. Lady Marjorie has proven to be quite popular throughout the city. I do wish you and Mother could come, although I know it would be impossible under the circumstances. I miss all of you, and I look forward to the day you can. And let's actually take a second. Where's my codex? Because there's a whole lot that we're behind here. So, all of our foresters we saw. Garrett, Duncan. Okay, so Royland de Gore. We stopped on him. So, Iron Rass, Master at Arms. Royland de Gore joined Forrester's army after his family was wiped out by Ironborn during Valen Greyjoy's rebellion. Dagor had a natural grasp of military tactics and strategy and came to play a crucial role in the Siege of Pike that ended the war. In the months that followed, King Robert awarded Royland a knighthood and Lord Forrester asked him to serve as Iron Rass Master at Arms. So Royland still holds the position and is known for his military expertise as well as his legendary temper. Now this guy, initially with um, Ethan, I didn't like the way he was talking to him. He's being very critical and I don't like that he needs to be supportive but I think I think we can earn he's the kind of person that you have to sort of earn his respect so even when in front of outsiders strangers to the house he needs to to put on a show of confidence for Ethan but privately between the two of us I think I need to earn his respect but when I do it will be well worth it that's the feeling I'm getting at this point anyway Maestro Tengren Maestro Tyenrath Originating from a minor house in the Vale, Maester Otengren studied at the Citadel in the hope of being assigned to the Eyrie. But by the time he'd learned enough li earned enough links on his chain to graduate from Acolyte, John Aaron had been murdered and the South was in turmoil. The Citadel ultimately assigned Maester Otengren to Ironrath, where he soon came to respect the Forester family's honor and integrity. He now serves the Foresters with pride, and he's become a trusted advisor to the Lord. Malcolm Branfield, Lady Forester's brother. As a young man, Malcolm was the black sheep of the Branfield family. He liked to roam the countryside in the style of a hedge knight, refusing his father's offers of marriage and lands. Malcolm fought bravely alongside his brothers when House Branfield fell. Yet he and his sister were the only two survivors. Malcolm now lives with Lady Alyssa's new family at Ironrath, though he still tends to disappear for weeks at a stretch. Malcolm has fathered no children, thus he is the last of the Branfield line. And Ironrath, ancient seat of House Forester. An imposing stronghold surrounded by towering ironwood trees, Ironrath marks the ancestral home of House Forester. Built over 1,500 years ago by Cedric Forrester and his triplet sons, Ironrath is a testament to the strength and endurance of Ironwood itself. More than one visitor has called Ironrath the most striking keep in the north. Even Ned Stark was said to be envious. Ironrath sits on the edge of the largest Ironwood forest in Westeros, which has proven to be a strategic advantage for the house. Alright, and that is it for the Codex. So, let's get back to Mira. Dusty old tome. What do you got here? Wonders Made by Man, by Lomas Longstrider. A gift from Roderick. I hope to see them all someday. Oh, has she not heard the news about Roderick yet? That'll be rough. I'm gonna wait on the window. Take a look over here. Okay, back to the window. I have a feeling that's gonna be, it's gonna be what triggers whatever happens next. Wait, a letter from mother, eh? Hmm, let's take a look at that. Nothing else over here, okay. It troubles me to even ask this of you, but you must appeal to Lady Marjorie to intervene on our behalf. She is our best hope and can be a powerful ally especially now when your family so desperately needs her help. Oh, ah, the letter was what did it. I should have looked out the window. Oh, well. And now I can't. Who's there? One moment. Oh, sorry, milady. I, I didn't mean to disturb you. I can come back later if you'd like. Um, who are you? No, it's fine. Come in. 
Oh, he's gonna light the brazier. Okay. Brazier. Brazier. Whatever. <laughs> Begging your pardon, lady, but you are right. If you don't mind my asking, you seem rather upset. I'm just worried about my family. Ah, letter from home, is it? It's kind of you to ask. Of course, my lady. You've always been kind to me. Please hurry if you can. Lady Marjorie will be here any minute. Of course, my lady. You work for Lady Marjorie? I may be wrong. But it seems like you do. Okay. It's widely known that I work for Lady Marjorie. I've seen you with her before. I don't want to be mean to you him, seem but like good friends. what's he angling at here? I saw Lady Marjorie just this morning, outside the Royal Sept, talking to Queen Cersei. Cersei? They appeared to be having some sort of disagreement. I couldn't hear much, but... Mm, what did they say? I couldn't make out much, but I know they were talking about the Starks and, and House Forrester. House Forrester? I hope you're not in any kind of trouble. Yeah, I hope but so I too. I thought you ought to know. Well, I guess thanks for the heads up. Most people don't tend to notice a cold boy. Not in King's Landing, with so many lords and ladies about. You see and hear all sorts of things when people don't even know you're there. Good night, my lady. Hmm. That was an odd conversation. I think on the whole he's sounding like maybe he's on our side, but... Lady Marjorie, you're early. I was hoping there would be time for us to talk. Come, there's something we must discuss. All right, let's get to it. From the day you arrived in Highgarden, I thought of you more as a friend than as my handmaiden. A dear friend, in fact. Thank you, my lady. And you know how I feel about what's happened to your family. I feel your pain as if it were my own. What you've suffered is beyond imagining. And your poor family as well. My family wrote me, my lady. I don't doubt they must be overcome with grief. But you must not despair. We will get through this together. You must understand there are limits to what I can say, especially here in King's Landing, now that I am to be queen. To have a handmaiden from the North whose family fought for Rob Stark. It raises questions at a time I can least afford. Don't dismiss Cersei me. Cersei herself cornered me this morning outside the Royal Sept. She mentioned the Northern girl in my service, and she painted you a traitor. She was very pleased with herself. Mm. Her face was full of mirth as she said it. I'm not a traitor. Of course not. It's only an excuse to torment you and by extension, me. So what are you going to do about it? She demands an audience. She wants an apology of some sort. For what, I don't know, but she's waiting for us now and I promised I would bring you to her. Ah, so this I will be a fun ask conversation. This of you if it were not important. I cannot afford any conflict with Cersei with the wedding so near. What do I say? Find a way to appease her. Humor her. Tell her what she wants to hear. Mm. Okay, but are you going to help me in exchange? See if the Queen Regent is ready to receive us. Now I'm wondering if I should have been less subtle and just straight up asked her to help. You'll be fine. I know you will. Oh, you're not coming in you with me? You feel one thing, but you must say another. Good luck. All right, and she's right here. We can't play this like I did with Ethan. We're not in the comfort of our house. We're in King's Landing. This is Cersei's place, so... We just kind of got to dance a line with her and try and keep her happy. Which could easily backfire us on us anyhow, because she's a tough character. Oh, Marjorie is coming in. Okay. You can do this. I 
as a character, when she was first introduced, you know, Cersei, she strikes you a little strange because, you know, one of your first scenes is you see her with her Ah, Lady Marjorie, brother. aren't you looking lovely this evening? Lord Tyrion, your grace? With your permission, allow me to introduce Lady Mira of House Forrester. We'll take a quick break. I really thought, though, like as the first book went on, that she was a very sympathetic character, really. I mean, we, as you learn more and more about her story, she's so she's she's Jamie's twin. She's born in this world. She wants to do all of the things that he can, and she doesn't understand why she can't because and it's all it, because the only reason is just because she's a woman, and that is grossly unfair. Like when when they're kids, they can dress in each other's clothing and they're interchangeable, but as they get older, and it's clear who's who, like suddenly she's restricted and she can't do any of the things she wants to do. She can't hold the positions of power that she wants to. She can't make the decisions for herself that she wants to. She's she's trapped simply by fact of being a woman. And then especially when she, when she has the scene where she, Ned is confronting her and telling her that she needs to run with her children because he's going to expose her. And she talks about her hatred of Robert. And Robert really was a crappy husband. He was terrible to her. And, you know, here she is, this young woman, forced to marry Robert because this is the arrangement her dad make, made. She's trying to make the best of it. Okay, well, I'll be queen. It'll be okay. And then instead, first thing is he, he's drunk and he calls her Lyanna. And from then on, it just never gets better for her. He's abusive to her. And she's stuck with it. So, I mean, who's going to stand up? He's the king. So actually, I really feel for her, or I did at the beginning. As the story went on, I think I read through the fourth book, and her storyline just got a little soap opera-ish. I'm holding out hope that it's going to kind of be reined in a bit. She really was sympathetic for quite a while, and then she sort of went off the deep end. Um, so I think at this point now is when she's starting to get kind of crazy. Because, yeah, she had some weird rivalry with Marjorie. So we've got to make sure to do things really careful here. We're going to do what Marjorie said. We're going to just try and appease her and trust that Marjorie legitimately cares about us and is going to help us out. All right, we'll kneel. Your grace. Aha, the, the girl queen knows her pleased. courtesies. Impressive. You may rise. House Forrester is a northern house loyal to the king. Are they? I beg your pardon, your grace. I wasn't talking to you. I want to hear from the girl. All right, is well, your I... family loyal to the king? Perhaps you should ask the new Lord Forrester. He's not here, is he? She is. All right, well, Joffrey I... Joffrey is the one true king, your grace. He's not, but... Hmm. And yet... Yet what? For centuries, the Foresters have been loyal bannermen to House Stark. A house of traitors. Uh, for centuries, they weren't traitors. Uh, let's see. Ugh. Yes, your grace. They are traitors. The Starks were your liege lord, yet you name them traitors so easily. Mm. I take it this is the kind of loyalty the king can expect from you, if you have any loyalty at all. Dang, I blew that. Well, is your house willing to swear fealty to your new liege lord, Roose Bolton? He is the Warden of the North, your grace. He is. And I, the Queen Regent, and Tyrion, the Master of Coin. The girl has a remarkable talent for answering questions while, in fact, saying nothing at all. No. Old allegiances are not I only hedged on like that one. But now that the war is over, we must look to rebuild and forge new alliances. There are ships and shields to be built, and Joffrey will need a steady supply of ironwood for his armies. I'm told there are others who would happily serve that purpose, but I trust we can rely on House Forrester. Foster Ironwood does seem rather unique. Oh, okay. To our mutual benefit, Your Grace. And at the pleasure of your king. It would be a shame to see it fall into the hands of another house. I imagine you'd do almost anything to prevent that from happening, wouldn't you? Well? Ask any Lannister, and they'd do whatever was necessary to save Casterly Rock. It would be unfortunate to see another house lay claim to what's yours. Mm. I won't dishonor myself, Your Grace. I see. 
I hope that's the right answer. What would you have the girl do, Cersei? It's not as if she fought beside the Starks, wielding a battle axe for the Northern Army. It raises an interesting question, I suppose. Can we truly blame those who end up on the wrong side of the war? Our dear Marjorie here was betrothed to Renly Baratheon on the false assumption that he would one day rule the Seven Kingdoms. Can we fault her for her mistake? Should she be held accountable? Um... I won't judge her, Your Grace. I wasn't there. I didn't face her decisions. I did Aren't avoid the question. Girl? If only one could flit through life without ever holding an opinion of their own. If there's a point to this, I hope you find it quickly. Yes, please. Loyalty can be such a hard thing to define. This city alone is filled with all sorts of ambitious opportunists looking to reinvent themselves. Pretending to be something they're not. Who knows what lurks within their hearts. You are a girl from the North, here in service to Lady Marjorie. One can only assume her interests are yours. Yet loyalty to a king, that must be absolute, beyond question. I said I was loyal to him. And if your loyalties were to become conflicted between your king and the very person whom you serve, what would you do then? I'm sure she would... Let the would... girl answer the question. Go on. Uh... I must choose Marjorie, your grace. I serve at her pleasure. That might Clearly have been the wrong thing to say, does but... Not have her priority straight. She is a threat to the crowd, <laughs> isn't she? The most dangerous handmaiden in all of King's Landing. My sense is this girl will say almost anything to get what she wants. Which is not very encouraging. I'd like a word with you, if I may. All of right. course, Your Grace. Well, that was horrible. Although, I have to wonder if there was any way it could have gone well. What, I'll walk you out. This may come as a surprise, but I met your father once, at the tourney at Lannisport. Even then he didn't trust Ruse Bolton. We only spoke briefly, but your father struck me as an honorable man. Hmm. You have my condolences for his loss. These would be trying times for your family, even under the best of circumstances. Well, Forgive me for saying it, but the Boltons have no honor. Ruse Bolton has many unique qualities. Honor is not one of them. You were brave to declare your loyalty to Lady Marjorie. Possibly foolish. No doubt she I should have said that. But Cersei, she will not soon forget what you said. I know. It was quite the first impression. I, of course, found it all highly entertaining. I wasn't trying to please her. I think that was clear to everyone. Mm. My sister and I have our difference. I was actually kind of trying to she please her, but... She takes great pleasure in her little charades. I take mine in thwarting them. We must find our amusements where we can. At the expense of everyone she around you, huh? She threatened to give your ironwood to another house. It is the master of coin who decides such matters. The crown needs boats. Boats need wood, and I speak for the crown in this regard. Not her. You can help my family. I suppose the Crown could be persuaded to secure Ironwood from House Forrester. Lady Marjorie might not look favorably on such an alliance. No. And it would infuriate Cersei. Although what would be amusing for me might prove rather dangerous for you and your house. Mm. Okay, maybe not Are you then. you willing to risk that? No. It may be far too dangerous. Um... In fact, forget I even... These are really hard choices, because there's so many people who are lying and spinning webs of intrigue here. I want to help my house, but I don't, I don't think pissing off Marjorie and Cersei is going to help. I like Tyrion, and I'd like to think he's being, on. well, if he's being honest here, he's basically telling us, don't do it, it's a bad idea. I think I'm going to have to turn it down. That might be really foolish. I hope I don't regret it, but I'm worried that if I say, nope, go for it, then it's going to come back badly on my house, so... ...and suggested such a thing? I'm sorry, Lord Tyrion, but it's a risk I cannot afford. I admire your discretion. 
Now, if you'll excuse me, I promised Sansa I would join her for dinner tonight. Three beautiful bottles of Dornish wine await my arrival. The mere thought of them makes me thirsty already. I hope we meet again. Nothing would make Cersei happier. Until then, be careful. This is not the North. I know. King's Landing can be a nest of vipers to the uninitiated. Alright, and we'll go ahead and wind the episode down there. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this. Come back next time. I'm feeling really rattled by that whole conversation. The bit with Cersei and then the bit with Tyrion. I, It was not clear to me what options are going to lead to good outcomes and what options are going to lead to bad outcomes. When I tried to please her, then she got mad because she knew that I was just lying to try and please her. Then when I try to stand up for myself, she gets mad because I'm like, I have no idea whether that went well or whether it went poorly for me. I'm feeling really unsettled by the whole thing, and I'm, I'm concerned about the impact this is going to have on the game, because terrible things might happen to my family because of me. So, come back next time, we'll, we'll see if there's any repercussions from this.